is certainly okay to stand, but we're not going to have any outbursts, we're not going to have applauses, we're not going to have signs. And you have uh, 10 minutes to uh, for your opening statement, and then after that we'll follow up with eight minutes of questions from the council. Thank you. Good evening to each and every one of you. And thank you for making this evening possible for all of us. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be considered by city council for the role of mayor of Allentown, not by invitation nor by election, but by charter provision. It's a great example of how our government works. With that being said, I want to take an opportunity to say how I believe our city may rise to the next level of expansion as a world-class city. One of the things that I love about Allentown is that it has the potential to be an example of what an American city in a global economy can be. Right now, we're dealing with a conflict. The conflict is not what happened here in Allentown. That's a very small part of what's happening in this country. Right now, people are unable to address the fact that the world has changed, that dollars do not necessarily come, and dollars are not necessarily made entirely in the US. I have come through a life where all of my career path has been the result of being in jobs that were <coughs> part of global expansions. And what I learned through that process is I had no clue what was happening to the rest of this country while well, I went around the world for the MTV Networks, National Basketball Association, talking about building brands in other countries. It wasn't until last year when I was at a conference when people were talking about DC dysfunction and everyone said, well, the people in the, in the Midwest don't understand, the people in the South don't understand, and then finally, I raised the question. I said, all my life, I've been in jobs that I was able to get because I spoke other languages. And for some reason, I never realized how many jobs were no longer available for people who did not speak other languages, for people who did not know how to deal with other cultures. I never paid attention to that because my income and my training, my gearing and everything was all devoted to globalization. Now, people can demonize globalization, people can say it's the next thing, and we have no choice in the matter. But I know one thing for sure, that I have the potential here in Allentown to make sure that we're at the forefront of the global expansion of this country. What I love about focusing in on the children of Allentown by being elected last year on November 7th with 7,102 Democratic votes, and I only ran as a Democrat. Now when I was elected, I had an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of children who not only live in multicultural neighborhoods, they live in a multicultural household. Mom is Vietnamese, dad is Afro-Latino, mom is Irish, and dad is Filipino. These are the families that make up Allentown. How that came about, I wasn't here for. But I moved here in 2012 by choice. I had been living in East Stroudsburg, and I had an opportunity to work in Allentown, and I did. And a little bit about that opportunity. I had become a financial advisor after four years of working for a corporation where everyone there reported in to a European office. It was based in New York, and a lot of the new hires came from London. A lot of the new hires were through an internship program uh, that was funded by Lord Mount, Mount Batten's foundation. And to me, that was high sign that the world had changed, and that we here in the United States had best be prepared for it. And one of the things that I love about the opportunity to work with our young people, by the way, close to 17,000, which makes them more than 14% of our entire Allentown population. What I love about it is that they actually have a leading position 
because they're familiar with other cultures. Even if their parents are monolithic in their background, they are still interacting with children from other areas of the world who speak other languages. It's up to them and their parents to decide whether or not to learn other languages or to become familiar with other cultures, but I can assure you that the way this world is going, that is what children in this country must learn to do. So I think Allentown is a wonderful example of what can happen. Just very quickly, to tell you more about that and my experience. When I arrived in Allentown in 2012, I was a financial advisor and sat with individuals and families to help them achieve their goals. I listened to hundreds of households, learned about their financial situations and their challenges. Through that process, I learned about the disparities in employment and income throughout the city. I found that many of the residents of Allentown are unable to find the employment they're seeking with Allentown. However, there are many people who earn a decent living in Allentown, but do not live here. I have also found that businesses that come to Allentown could do more for the people of Allentown than they have already done. What I have planned to achieve in the 18 months of being mayor, and yes, I will be running in 2019, is to revise the procurement process for greater transparency with clear explanations of the bidding process. Encourage companies that are interested in doing business in Allentown to demonstrate how they would benefit the residents of Allentown. They wouldn't need to impress me as mayor, but impress our residents by offering benefits, work hours, and salaries that reflect the intentions of a company looking to build a solid reputation within our city. I should add, one of the things that my father did for me, even though my mother died when I was young, I still had a very stable household, even during the time before he remarried, because he had one job, one job, and he never changed jobs. He excelled, and rose through the ranks at his employer. However, he came home at night the same time, practically every day. So many of our children do not have that opportunity. So many of our children, parents work two and three jobs. But yet, a lot of us will look at the parents and wonder why they're not devoting the attention they think their child deserves. Another thing is I would create a clearly defined minority and women business enterprise program that identifies opportunities for these companies to expand within our city. Having served on a subcommittee of the United States Department of Commerce Minority Business Development Agency on Minority Access to Capital in 2002, I am familiar with the benefits and enhancements this can bring to a thriving city. I create an inspection task force to evaluate housing in every ward, starting with the wards with the highest incidence of blight, and determine best practices for reforming substandard housing. I create a task force to evaluate the abandoned vacant properties, create a retirement pension task force to assess the city's current pension obligations and educate city employees. I create a task force to focus on year-round youth programs and institute a summer youth employment program to prepare our youth to be the future workforce within our city and beyond. I create a public safety task force to ensure the appropriate allocation towards and distribution of funding, infrastructure, and resources for our police, fire, and EMT services. Create a budget task force to establish a budgeting process that builds from what we want to achieve in an Allentown that can be weighed against our resources so that we may seek out solutions to make those budget goals viable. While producing investment conferences for IMN, a division of Euro Money Institutional Investor, I worked with many well-established forums to explore topics in municipal finance, corporate governance, socially responsible investment, sustainability, and shareholder activism. Those insights would be beneficial to evaluating what is possible to move our city forward. I'd also create a task force to evaluate how Allentown may compete for new business locally and globally, while ensuring that our residents are an integral part of that process. 
When you review my resume, you'll see more about what I said about the global work I've done, and I'm familiar with the characteristics that make a, a city viable for international commerce and selection for national and global events. Over the years, I have worked in management roles where I had to quickly pull together a team to create an event or to tackle an issue. Consistently, my approach is collaborative, inclusive, and win-win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we set the timer, and there will be eight minutes for questions from members of the council. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you for coming over and for wanting to participate in our city process here, uh, in our city government. Um, we question you, you, who are, you are a financial advisor, and I uh, wanted to find out a little bit, can you give us some advice in regards to how to, you know, we have a, a probably structural deficit of about $8 million is what's been said by many people, and uh, seems to be a, an interesting number. Um, what kind of advice would you give us in the city, um, if you were a mayor, and even now, um, to make sure that we have a sustainable finance in the city for years to come? Well, first and foremost, I should mention that I made sure when I ran for school board that I would determine whether or not to remain a financial advisor because there are a number of filings that you have to do on an ongoing basis when major decisions like bond issuances are done. I chose not to remain as a financial advisor because I did not want to continue under the compensation model. So I allowed my licenses to expire on December 31st of 2017. So I know in the morning call they had me listed as a financial advisor, but um, that's not what I am at this time. Uh, however, to answer your question, I have to do that for legality issues. <laughs> to answer your question, there are a number of things that I would do to address the eight million. First of all, I would make sure it's eight million. Um, I would make sure that it's not more than eight million. And I would make sure that if it is eight million, that we take a look at all of the different things that we believe are essential and confirm that. And then begin to look at all of the different things that we might be able to find an alternative for. And by alternative, I don't mean that we eliminate it as a line item, but we look for other sources to fund that. There are some things that may be provided as an in-kind grant, not dollars, because not every company is going to give you dollars. But a company may say, we'll do this for you, but it's gonna be under these conditions. And these are the types of relationships and conversations we'll have to have. There may be other things that can be done where bond issuances are done by the municipality, that would actually bring more money into the municipality. But that's all for a conversation based on having looked at line by line what we view as essential and then evaluating what we feel as possible alternatives. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Welcome and thank you for applying. Um, uh, Mr. Garidi actually stole my question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see in the future though raising taxes? Well, at some point I think taxes will go up, but would it go up within the time that I'm a mayor? I don't know. I think that what happens a lot when people talk about raising taxes is that they're using that as a first line of defense as opposed to a last resort. It's almost like when you tip, in, you dip into your retirement fund and then you find out down the road that if you had just worked out the payments differently, you wouldn't have needed to tap that money. And that's the way I feel about taxation. We really have to look at what our ongoing expenses, expenses are, see if there's any opportunity for renegotiation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I believe that we both share our passion to help the youth, to help you know the children in the city, of, in the city. And um, what I would like to know is, 
what other programs do you think that we can implement in this city for gun violence? For gun violence, and specifically with young people, mm -hmm. I think it's more a matter of outreach, and I think it's also a matter of providing programs for self-expression. There are a lot of people who have spoken about the victims of all of the mass shootings. And a lot of people have talked about the leniency that may have been given to some of the shooters. But I have heard very little discussion about whether or not children are learning to express themselves in ways that are beneficial to them as well as society. I use this reference loosely, but I think about people like Kurt Cobain, who was a phenomenal musician, and he was known throughout the world as a rock artist. And yes, he did die by what was classified as suicide. However, would he have lived that long if he didn't have music in his life? We don't know. And also, the Summer Youth Employment Program, where children, it's not just about making money, it's about having other people recognize you in the world as a contribution. And sometimes those horrible behavior patterns that we saw in those mass shootings are more of a shout for acknowledgement, for recognition, to be known. And sometimes, even if a person is working at a car wash, and that's not the kind of some youth program jobs I'm looking for, but even if they were working at a car wash and someone came to them and said, you're the only person who took care of my car like that. You never know how that extends the life of that individual because someone took a moment to recognize them. Which reminds me, on that shout out question, I would say to city employees, I see you. And they would understand. And I would be there and I would be present and then have, every so often, morning breakfast or things along those lines to get to know them more specifically. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Blast, for applying. I just have a quick question, because you just got on the school board. Yes. Is there a reason why you're looking to leave in addition to applying for this? That is such an excellent question, and that's something that I had pointed to at the end of my presentation um, that I submitted, I said it was, that is how I would view the existing, okay, where is it here? I was elected to the Alatel School Board in November of 2017. It was great to know that voters placed their confidence in me to work on their behalf. Being appointed to mayor will not change that sense of obligation. I want to represent all residents of Allentown and provide an env environment for them to thrive. In the short time that I've been on the school board, I've come to recognize that there are a number of inner workings within the city of Allentown and the Allentown School District that we cannot ignore. And what I want to do is to be a solution and to bridge some gaps that need to be, um, need to be had in terms of conversations and decision making. Since we're running low on time, Ms. Watts, first of all, thank you. Uh, can you discuss a pension task force to educate employees and look at our current obligations? Are you suggesting switching our employees to a 401k system as opposed to defined benefit pension? Not at all, not at all. I'm very much a proponent of defined benefit pensions, especially if you've been hired with a defined benefit pension to have no concern about losing it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, at this point, as soon as we start here, you'll have two minutes to sum up, and you'll have to uh, tell City Council why you should be the mayor. Um, I will just remind the audience that when she is done, we will back with proper decorum. I don't expect to see any applause or any standing up or any shouting. Is that understood? Thank you. Okay. Let me go. So one of the things that I want to uh, reiterate and then complete stating is that over the years I have worked in management roles where I had to quickly pull together a team to create an event or tackle an issue. My consistent approach has always been collaborative, inclusive, and seeking win-win outcomes. I thrive on transparency and communicate with all parties. 
involved to manage expectations. Quite frequently, I had to develop programming or events with a new city in the US and overseas with people I never knew. There's an open respect that I have for individuals in that I look to see them excel and provide the resources to ensure they excel because the results are beneficial to all of us. That is how I will view the existing staff and future staff as I evaluate the teams that must be developed to carry out the task mentioned in my above application. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.